Top of the news, President Obama has opened the door, if just a little, to prosecuting Bush administration officials for authorizing torture against terror suspects. CBS News senior White House correspondent Bill Plant has more. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Harry. As the president has said in the past, he doesn't believe that the people who carried out those interrogations should be prosecuted. He got a lot of blowback on that. So yesterday he did open the door to the possible prosecution of Bush administration officials who gave those orders. I would say that that is going to be more of a decision for the attorney general within the parameters of uh, various laws, and, and I don't want to prejudge that. The remarks by President Obama came just days after the controversial declassification and release of the CIA torture memos. They disclosed that three al-Qaeda operatives had been waterboarded more than 260 times. Many legal experts insist that waterboarding is torture and that those who have sanctioned it need to be held accountable. They're wrong because they, they allowed the, their, their zeal and their passion and their, their concern about the safety of the United States to overcome reason. Former Vice President Dick Cheney, a supporter of the controversial interrogation tactics, believes that they helped keep America safe after 9-11. And there are reports that uh, show specifically um, what we gained as a result of this activity. Cheney's not the only one. Intelligence Director Dennis Blair sent a private memo to his staff since authenticated in which he said high value information was gained using those methods, but he added, I like to think I would not have approved those methods in the past. Blair, like his boss, the president, doesn't believe the people who carried out the orders should be prosecuted. Harry? Bill Plan at the White House this morning. Thanks. In 2003, Janice Karpinski was the brigadier general who ran the prisons in Iraq, including Abu Ghraib. She was demoted to colonel in the aftermath of the scandal and has since retired. She's with us this morning. And as we see this morning in the front pages of many papers around the country, there are findings this morning from a Senate Armed Services Committee report, which is scheduled for release later today, that suggests that the roots of torture, the roots of the idea of torture, were being circulated in the Pentagon and the CIA as early as 2002. That's two years preceding what happened at Abu Ghraib. When you hear things like that, what do you think? I think it took a f far too long for this information to surface and to come out. And when you were preparing soldiers, units and soldiers to deploy to war, it would have been very helpful to arm them with as much information as you had available. Um, so in 2002, people were well aware of these policies and the discussions, but it certainly would have been important to share that with the soldiers that you were sending off to war to uh, conduct these operations. Because part of your sense is that this was pervasive in certain parts of the military culture, that the people who did the tortures in Abu Ghraib didn't act alone, they didn't act, this didn't grow organically out of a cell Absolutely. down someplace. They, from the beginning, um, I've been saying that these soldiers didn't uh, design these techniques on their own, and the soldiers routinely said uh, as much as they could in their own court-martials, you know, we were following orders. We were bringing this uh, to our chain of command, and they were saying whatever the military intelligence tells you to do out there, uh, you're authorized to do. Okay, we're showing waterboarding now, which was not part of the uh, techniques per se in Abu Ghraib, but were used in by the CIA against Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and others. Is there a line, do you see that there is a lining run that goes from 2002 to Abu Ghraib to the hundreds of times waterboards were used in, in these cases of these few CIA cases? Absolutely. The line is very clear um, that it was cloudy for years, obviously seven years if 2002 were the initial discussions, but the line is clear. It went from Washington, D.C., from the very top of the administration uh, with the, the legal opinions through Bagram to Guantanamo Bay and then to Iraq via the command Mm. from Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, right. um, and, and the contractors who were hired to do those things. And in the, in the end end, you feel like, for instance, the people who were prosecuted for these crimes who were under your command, and even yourself, do you believe were scapegoated? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, scapegoat is the perfect word, and it's an understatement. Um, right now, with the, the, the hard, fast facts in those memos, the black and white proof, um, the administration is suggesting that those operatives should be uh, immune from any uh, investigations or persecution. But what about the soldiers mm. who were uh, categorized as seven bad apples back right. in 2004? 
Colonel, thank you so much for taking the time thank to speak you. with us. Do appreciate it.